guys i hope you have a lovely week um thank you so much for sending in some lovely work um it's so lovely at the end of a school day to see what you've been up to so please keep on sending it in okay right i'm going to carry on with our here's the naughtiest girl story um <clears throat> right so on chapter two patrick comes up against elizabeth elizabeth hurried round to the side of the school Thud, 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 she heard the balls being hit ag uh, re regularly against the wall. She turned to the corner and called out to Patrick. Hey, you're supposed to be at the garden meeting. You'd better come at once. Get out of my way, please, said Patrick. I'm practising. Elizabeth glared. John sent me, she said. All right, I'll send you back, said Patrick, almost hitting Elizabeth with one of the balls as he set sent it against the wall near her. Don't be an idiot, said Elizabeth, trying not to lose her temper. You know I'm a monitor, don't you? Well, you've got to come when you're told. It's no good having monitors unless they're obeyed. You know that. I'm not obeying a girl, said Patrick. Do go away. I shall get annoyed with you in a minute. Elizabeth promptly proceeded to get uh, to get even more annoyed with the infuriating Patrick. She rushed at him um, and wrenched away his racket. He was so taken by surprise that he let it slip out of his hands. Then Elizabeth raced away at the top speed with it. Patrick tore after her in rage. Elizabeth turned a corner and deftly threw the racket into the middle of a bush. Then on she went without stopping, back to the meeting. She arrived there panting. Before she could say a word to the startled meeting, Patrick arrived too, fuming. Where's my racket? How dare you snatch it like that? Elizabeth, what have you done with my racket? Elizabeth said nothing. John looked surprised but pointed to a seat. Sit down, Patrick, he said. We've been waiting for you. I haven't come to your silly meeting, said Patrick furiously. I've come after Elizabeth for my racket. Sit down, ordered John. You're at the meeting now, and here you'll, and here you'll stay. You won't get your racket till the meeting is over, and not then if you don't behave yourself. Patrick was so surprised at John's determined voice that he sat down. He looked all round for his racket, making up his mind to snatch it and go, but he couldn't see it, which was not surprising, as it was still outside in the bushes. Patrick didn't hear a word of the meeting. He glared at Elizabeth triumph Elizabeth's triumphant face. He scowled at the little smile on Julian's. Julian was amused at Elizabeth's method of bringing his unwilling cousin to the meeting, and he wondered where she had put the racket. Elizabeth forgot about Patrick and her interest in the meeting. She was very fond of gardening, and John regarded her as one of his right-hand helpers. He, um, he kept consulting her, and she was pleased. She didn't notice that the sky had clouded over and that it had begun to rain. It was only when it suddenly pouted against the window that she looked out and saw the torrents of rain that were falling. Even then, she didn't think about the racket outside in the bushes. She didn't think of it until the meeting was over. Then John turned to the board and, sulk and sulky Patrick. Now, you can have your racket back from Elizabeth, he said. And please remember, if a meeting of the whole form is arranged, you've got to come to it. Patrick scowled. Elizabeth suddenly remembered where she had put his racket, in the middle of the bushes. Goodness, had he got wet in the rain? She knew it was a new racket and that Patrick was intensely proud of it. She wished she could go and get it out of the bushes and dry it before she gave it back to Patrick. But he gave her no chance to do that. He followed close to, at her heels when she went out of the room. She walked out of the garden door and went to the wet bushes. It was still pouring with rain. She fished out the soaked racket. Patrick stared at it in horror and anger. You beast, you flung my new racket in there pour in the pouring rain. It'll be ruined. It wasn't raining when I put it in there, you know. It wasn't. You know it wasn't, said Elizabeth. Well, why didn't you go out and get it when the rain began, said Patrick furiously. You left it in there on purpose. You meant the rain to spoil it, just like a girl. I didn't mean to spoil it, said Elizabeth angrily. I didn't even notice it was raining till nearly the end of the meeting. And then I forgot all about your racket. It's your fault for not coming to the meeting. So that I, ha uh, so that I had to fetch you. Patrick was wiping the strings with his handkerchief. Um, he, was he was trembling with rage, rage and disappointment. His lovely new racket. I hate you for this, he said. Now you'll go and laugh about it with Julian and be glad that you ruined my racket. There wasn't a better one in school. You'll both be glad it's spoiled. Patrick, don't be silly, said Elizabeth. Look, I'm very sorry that I didn't think of your racket being out in the rain. If I'd remembered it, I'd have gone to get it at once. And of course, Julian, I won't be glad, I won't be glad if it's spoiled. Yes, you will. I detest you both, said Patrick. His face was bright red and his green eyes flaming like Julian's did when he was angry. I'll get even with you. You're just exactly the kind of mean catty girl I'd expect my, I'd expect my cocky cousin to be friends with. He tucked his racket under his arm and walked off in rage, the rain still pouring down as he went. 
Elizabeth shook back her wet curls. Blow, what an idiot she had been to forget the racket when it had begun to rain. She really was sorry about that. Julian met her as she went back. Gosh, you are wet, he said. What happened? Where did you put his racket? Not out in the rain, I hope. Yes, I did, but I didn't mean to, said Elizabeth, so, um, so, uh, said Elizabeth, and she told Julian what had happened and what Patrick had said. He never liked me before, Julian, and now he's really furious with me. He hates you too, doesn't he? Oh dear, I do hope he won't say do anything silly now. He really looked as if he'd like to hit me with his racket. He probably would have, uh, would have if he hadn't thought of his racket, uh, thought his racket would be hurt more than you would, said Julian. Cheer up. What can he do to pay you back? Or me either. Nothing that matters. Come on, to, come on to, into the gym. Um, there'll be, there's, there'll be games going on in there. Patrick made a great fuss about his precious racket. He told everyone what had happened. He spoke of having to get all the strings replaced, and when the next school meeting was held, he actually got up and asked for the money to have his racket completely restrung. He stood up when William said, Any complaints, please? Anyone, um, anyone could then stand up and lodge a complaint, big or small. Patrick leapt to his feet before anyone else. I have a complaint, he said, against a monitor, Elizabeth Allen. She left my racket out in the rain and it's ruined. I want to ask for money out of the school money box so that I can pay for it to be restrung. Elizabeth, perhaps you'd like to say something about this, said William, the head boy in surprise. Elizabeth stood up, feeling embarrassed. She related truthfully to what happened and added that she was very sorry about the racket being left out in the wet. But it wasn't for very long, she said, and I'm sure, William, that it doesn't need restringing. Um, have you the racket with you, William? Uh, William asked Patrick. No. Well, go and get it. I know a good bit about rackets and I can tell you that once, uh, I can tell you at once what wants doing. Patrick went to get the racket with a very bad grace. He came back and gave it to William. Look, there's a string gone already, he said, pointing to the broken string. Elizabeth start, stared in dismay. William examined the racket very carefully. Then he put it down and looked sternly at Patrick. That string is not frayed or split, he said. It has been cut. The racket does not need restringing. Only that one string needs putting, putting in. Who cut it, Patrick? Tell me that. How should I know, said Patrick sulkily. There was a short silence. Now listen, said William. You yourself must pay for that one string to be renewed. The rain had nothing to do with it being broken. I think you know that very well. Every other string is perfectly all right. If you still want the whole uh, racket restrung, you can save up two pounds and you're allowed, uh, you're allowed each week and pay, it, pay for it yourself. But it will take you more than a term of money. Patrick snatched up his racket without a word. He glanced at Elizabeth. She looked scornfully back. So he had actually cut a string of his, in his own racket to try and make out that it, uh, she had really spoiled it by leaving it for a few minutes in the rain. What a thing to do. Patrick made a sudden face at her and then left the platform with his racket. He passed by Julian and saw a little smile on his face. He almost hit him with the racket. I'll pay you both back, he said in, uh, in a whisper and marched right out of the hall. Don't call him back, said Rita, the head girl to William. He's a new boy. He's got to learn our ways. Now, any more complaints? There were none, nor were there any grumbles. William hammered his fist on the table as a little uh, as a little talking broke out. You may dismiss, he said. The meeting is over. Elizabeth sped to Julian. Oh, Julian, isn't Patrick mean? Did he really cut that string, do you think? It did look exactly as if it had been cut. Of course he did, said Julian. He's an idiot. We'd better look out, uh, look out for him now, Elizabeth. He may really try to pay you back. Pooh, I'm not afraid of Patrick, said Elizabeth. And she wasn't. Right, that's the end of our second chapter. Um, I hope you have a wonderful day and I will see you very soon. Bye.